I'm at a gypsy. Same in racing. Everybody goes practicing four times a week. And the, and the, and the idea is to, to be fast, to be smooth, and I love what I'm doing, right? I, I'm going to the track because I love what I do, and I'm going to be fast, smooth, and I'm going to go and ride as best I can. Then they get to the race on the weekend, and now there's a have to, got to, need to. I have to do this. I got to beat this guy. I need to be, you know, fast or whatever. So now you just put all this pressure on yourself. You, t- you took away the action of it. Mm. Does that make sense? You took away the action of riding the motorcycle and you put yourself at the end of the race with this result of I have to, I got to, I need to get this position. But then you forgot about all these little things that make these things happen. But during practice, you're focusing on all these little things that make speed happen because there's no result. There's no expectation. Mm. Right. So with my coaching, I do the same thing. I don't have a result. I don't have an expectation. I just coach. Mm. So when you go practice, you just ride. But when you go to the race, now you change your, your, your thinking, you know what I mean? You put a result on yourself and that's why most people are better practicers than they are racers. Mm. So you should go to the race with the same idea and just, and just ride as clean, as fast, as smooth as you can. Well, what position you need to get today? I don't know. Don't care. Mm. That's at the end of the race. There's so many little things that happen before that result happens that most people are coming to the race and already at the end of the race before they even kickstart their bike. Does that mm. make sense? They're already at, I got to get first, I got to get third, hopefully I get fifth, you know, hopefully I get top 10, hopefully I qualify. That's the end of the race. What about your start? What about the turn? What about the this? What about that? What about loose arms? What about looking ahead? What about breathing? You know, those are the things that are going to get you your, your result. But mm. if my mind is so focused on the money I'm making on my, at the end of the day, then I'm going to miss all these little things that little Johnny and Billy are doing. And that, that's the, my perspective, you know? I try yeah. to never focus on the result of it. So focus on the action of it. So who is doing it the best right now in your mind, in the professional uh, realm of racing a dirt bike? <clears throat> Technique wise, I will go with, um, I go with a, a jet Lawrence. Yep. A Roxon, but, Roxon's wrist guards to me affect him a little bit. As you can see, when you watch him ride, it's a little bit of this. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Watch, watch some of his races and you'll see this happen, right? Because that's what's happening. It's hitting here. And so when, mm. his wrist, when his wrist goes to this point and it can't go down any farther, then this is going to push this down. When he gets in some tricky sections with, when he gets into a battle with uh, Cooper, you see kind of him get affected more, mm. right? When things are happening super quick. But when he can ride smooth and clean, then man, he's, he's awesome. But when things are happening a little bit faster, I see him get a little bit more affected from, from that. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'd say I put him in there with a the technique. Christian Craig, of course, with a technique. Uh, head wise, I would definitely put, um, you know, Cooper Webb. Um, I definitely put him with the, the most mental strength. Uh, fitness wise, I will put Tomac. Mm. I just think that if, when it comes down to brutal, brutal, you know, times and I the believe that can hurt from where most. he lives, you know, I think a lot of people, <clears throat> I just believe people are making mistakes living in at sea level when this, this sport's called a, a cardio sport, so to speak. Yeah. And most elite athletes live at altitude. <laughs> mm. So I feel that's where he gets his benefit from at living at 8,500 feet. Mm. Cause if anybody's ever spent a few weeks up at 8,500 feet and come down to sea level, you are a monster, dude. Mm. You are a monster. So his view, you know, he, he has more red blood cells, more oxygen, da, da, da. So that's, that's the thing. But, um, you know, he is getting up there with age. He's been, you know, it, it's the sport. He's been you hammering down? it out a while. Yeah. Down? There's a, a lot of young kids. Yeah. A lot of young kids. There's a lot of kids that have changed their ways. There's a lot of kids that have, uh, writers done this and that. So you're not going to always be that, that uh, dominant guy, you know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting that and you said so that about, you know, um, Oh, sorry, Ron. Uh, it's interesting you said that about Kenny because there was the the last round. Um, he was obviously in a pretty tight battle with Coop, and there was a uh, when he was in the thick of that battle, the whoop section, the camera was actually side on in the whoop section and filming the dudes mm-hmm. pretty much go perfectly mm-hmm. side on, and you could actually see Kenny's uh, attack position break down over the race. And there was uh, right when he was like mm-hmm. really in the thick of that battle with Coop the attack position that he had through those whoops uh, degenerated uh, quite significantly. 
And uh, yeah, to to hear you make that point about the wrist braces, mm. that's actually quite interesting. I'd never, I yeah. forgot the dude was even wearing them. Yeah, we have wrist bra- you know, wrist braces and knee braces. And again, if you anytime, so if my knees, if I have thirty to forty percent of, if you know, mobility in my knees, and I am without knee braces, and my body is allowed to go this way efficiently, right, back and forth, and stay with the bikes, the bike staying underneath me. Well, if I'm locked up, my knees are locked up. Well, now I'm only bending at the hips. So now I counterbalance the bike. In this next Supercross, I want everybody to fucking watch every corner and watch how smooth Cooper is and how inside he can go mm. on these some of these corners. And I feel that is because he's just a teeny, teeny bit more efficient with his knees because his knees will move more than with a neck with a knee brace. And you can see it. You watch him go through a corner and there's just a teeny, teeny, teeny little pause or hesitant or the body going the other direction with the other riders. Yeah. Okay. And that teeny, teeny, teeny is that two hundredths a second. Yeah. 200 of a second. Wow. He's 200 of a second faster than me. Fuck, man. By five laps, he's two seconds faster. He's two seconds ahead of me. That's a lot yeah. in Supercross, but it's nothing. You know what I mean? It's yeah. nothing. And you, where, did, where did he pass uh, Roxon last time? Very inside. Yeah. You know, so this is what I'm seeing over the jumps and things like that because you, you can't deny it. It's, it's, <laughs> you can't deny it. When you stiffen the body up, it's going to work more. When you stiffen the body up, you're going to limit it. Mm. You, I don't know how nobody can understand this. I don't know how nobody can see this. You, know, you understand? What sport on earth wears braces? None. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.